and how much can the world, the rest of the world, uh, affect and is be responsible for China's current situation? For example, uh, the, the rest of the world wants China to consume a lot of its goods, but at the same time that causes its own problems. Yeah, well, absolutely. Um, I, I think the, the rest of the world is, well, the rest of the, at least the advanced part, the, the richer part of the world, um, does have a lot of responsibility, for example, for, for China's carbon emissions. I think something like 20% of China's carbon emissions are actually produced by factories um, uh, manufacturing goods for Western or, or, or f first world, if you like, consumers. Um, but, then, and, and, but then there is that second, uh, the, the second point about China's consumption in the future. Now, this is something where environmentalists and economists look at it from two completely different points of view. Uh, every e economist wants China and Chinese consumers to buy more and consume more. And that's going to be the new driver for global growth. Uh, if you look at it from an environmental point of view, just thinking, wow, um, as a species, we're already way over the limit. Um, and um, China's going to join uh, the, the, the rich world on, on, on putting extra stress on, on, on our planet. Um, so how are we going to rebalance? You know, clearly, the rich world can't just lecture China. There has to be give and take between the two. Uh, but there also has to be recognition that we all have to change. I'm getting the sense that you really want to be optimistic about China's future when it comes to uh, green issues, but deep down you can't shake off the pessimism. How would you describe it? Uh, I, I, I think that's, that's right. I, I, the way I put it is, I, since I've come to China, I've become more pessimistic, um, not just about China, but at, about the direction we're going as a species. I think China is where the world's problems are focused, and it's not just China's fault. Um, but at the same time, uh, I'm not without hope. There are still many things we can do. There's some amazing work being done globally and also within China. Um, and, uh, you know, our, our destiny is in our own hands. Talk more about the social cost of, of environmental issues here in China. Uh, the social cost is um, instability in extreme cases. Um, there are a huge number of protests related to the environment. We don't know how many because the government has stopped releasing figures. Um, but we've certainly seen a number of protests, such as the ones I've already mentioned in, in, in Xiamen uh, uh, and, and in, in Dalian about chemical factories. I've, I've been to others where there were, were, was very serious fighting between riot police and local people because the locals didn't want chemical factories. Um, and and I, I think there, there are lots of these cases happening all the time um, at, at different scales. Um, so there's that issue. And then I think um, it's also connected to the growing sense of ethnic tension, uh, particularly in the, the hinterlands, the, 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 the peripheries of, 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 of China. Um, there are, it, it's a complex issue, the, the Tibetan issue, the Xinjiang issue, the, the Inner Mongolian issue, they're, they're all complex. But one of the uh, things that is adding to the existing pressures is that there is more and more environmental pressure being put on these areas as more mining companies and hydro companies and other resource extraction companies move into those areas and the traditional way of life is, is, is changed and, and disrupted. And there's, you know, there, there is a lot of readjustment and that readjustment creates the environment, uh, the climate uh, for tension and instability. Do you think perhaps environmental activists get more leeway than uh, human rights activists or other political uh, activists? And even though environmental issues can be quite sensitive, they're deemed less sensitive and so they're allowed? Uh, very broadly speaking, that may be the case. Um, it depends on the issue. I think there's um, a quite a lot of scope for um, journalists from one province to go to another province and report on the problems that they have there. Uh, and there's some very good stuff comes out because of that. Um, but there are other times when there are issues that affect the central government um, when there's less leeway. And I've, I've heard from Chinese journalism fr journalist friends that this still goes on. Um, and th there's some stories they'd like to write that they, they simply cannot write. Um, so let's see. Inevitably, you cover some, some pretty negative and depressing topics. Conversely, though, what are the, some of the most inspiring either stories you've covered or, or people that you've encountered? Mm. Well, there, there are also many of those. I think um, on a very broad level, the, the most encouraging um, thing I've seen is that attempt to decarbonize China's economy, to invest very heavily in, in renewables. I think that's immensely encouraging. Um, but then on, on, on the more sort of the, the grassroots level, uh, I, I think 
seeing some of the Chinese environmental activists at work, how they've grown, how they're um, uh, you know, pushing back the boundaries of what they're able to do, how idealistic many of them are. Um, uh, that, that's, that's been you know, really inspiring. I mean, people like uh, Ma Jun or, or, or Wang Yongchen, um, there are many others, and you know, it's not easy for them to, to operate. They're, they're kind of making things up as they go along and, and sometimes taking risks. Um, some environmental actors, particularly in, 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 in smaller villages, um, you know, they risk being beaten up if they, if they challenge the developer or the local officials. Some journalists who expose big stories, you know, they, they, they risk demotion or pressure. Um, and, and, so, and so I think, you know, the, this, is, this is really, really um, uh, impressive stuff that, that will stick with me. Jonathan, thank you very much. Thank you.